this time of year, every day is very unpredictable. You never know what's going to come down the pike. You never know what's going to happen. We have so many things going on, so many shop projects, family things, working on our bathroom, rebuilding things, <laughs> just making me crazy. But anyway, well, I'm hoping that at some point in this day, I'll be able to take a ride. We'd like to run up to a place, the Doramus House, that was built in 1760. It's a beautiful ride. Nice short ride, and we should be back in time for the family obligations. Now, in keeping with the life I so enjoy, this is going to be an unpredictable day. We are expecting company to come over today. That's one thing I have to work around. I have to find out what time they're coming, what time they're leaving, find out if I can get a sneaker ride in, and if I can't, I'll get some work done on one of the bikes. But it's always unpredictable this time of year. Now we have the fuel, the fuel pump and the plugs for this ready. This this is kind of an all day job though because I wanted to pull that hole. This bike has to basically a lot of work to, to get the plugs. It's not a, a five minute job like changing them on an RD. But I do have, and this is what I love about this time of year, you, you kind of can play out the morning what what how the day is going to play out and then you know by early in the day you know how big of a chunk of time you have to either work on a bike or as I'm hoping for, because it's still rideable, we still are in the riding season. You never know. But having both choices, it's better than having no choices at all, or as I always say, better than that day on Rikers Island. And for you people that live outside the New York area and don't know what Rikers Island is, it's a prison. It's a prison. <laughs> the food's not that good. <laughs> the pay is worse than what I get, if that's possible. But hey, we appreciate every day we do get to either work in a shop or go out on the open road. Every day we have is a blessing and I'm always glad if we can share part of, part of the unpredictability of it all. It, it's one of the reasons I say I don't like to ever have two days the same. No Groundhog Days. Now again, this time of year I always make up a priority list. This bike is due for a good polishing. All the aluminum things have, the motor especially, Hasn't really been detailed out in a while. The FCR, we have a whole day to work on that. Plugs and a fuel pump. The R1 is going to be ready for a new back tire soon. And, and this guy, I don't know. We're just going to ride a lot. We're going to ride him a lot because he's got a windshield. Good for cold weather riding. MT-09, we're waiting for Vlad to bring us the hugger. And we have some other parts. I have the conversion parts ordered for the Jivy tank bag mount. And I don't have a way of mounting the radar detector on the RD or the GS. That's going to be something I'm going to be working on in the future. So we're hoping it's going to warm up a little this morning. Although it's not supposed to rain until this afternoon. So we have a, uh, a dilemma on our hands. So like every day this time of year, everything's unpredictable and pretty much dependent on the weather. Which right now it's supposed to warm up in the next couple hours. But this... I'm just going to make a, a simple point. There is no point going out when it's 40 degrees out, when it's going to be in the high 40s or low 50s in two hours. So I have two hours to, to basically think about it. And I wanted to make sure this is my battery for the RD. Get the unboxing out of the way. We'll be installing this in the next couple of days. I always save the box just in case. And in this case... Now, I wanted to mention something that's, that's really, uh, really important with these batteries. I, I was one of the first ones. I remember I bought it from Circle Cycle. He had a ballistic lithium battery, and I put it in the R1. It lasted five years. And so, I, you know, I don't know if that's the normal lifespan or what. But uh, like I say, I always save the batteries. There's a reason I like the battery tender ones. They have this electronic... So you can't overcharge it or undercharge it or whatever. And I've got, I think, four of them in the bikes now. I'm replacing all the batteries as they get old. And I'm not waiting for them to go dead so I'm stuck in the middle of Pakistan when they go dead. I want to replace them, especially with winter coming up. And what, uh, I don't want to be, be stuck because of something I'm going to have to replace anyway. Anyway, to do a, I'm going to do a complete battery installation and stuff, but I wanted to make sure this was the right battery. It is the right battery. 
before I go take the other one apart and there's several things including these which are make for a, I'll make a separate video people have not installed a lithium-ion battery it'll be interesting information we'll we'll go over that but here's the main thing with the lithium-ion batteries number one you can turn them upside down any way you want that number two they, they don't weigh anything they're like a box of Kleenex the the thing I had in the very beginning and what's nice about these batteries they have the four posts so you can put it in this way this way this way whichever and they give you all these rubber spacers to space around it and pack it in because these are smaller than regular batteries now I remember from doing the last one the last one I installed I think was on the 650 I do remember that there was a uh, where is the tear it is the little the little gizmo that goes on top here but I want to do this on a separate video so I'm just gonna make sure I have everything I'll save the boxes and uh, sometime later this week we will make a separate dedicated video of doing this right now the thing is that I wanted to do I wanted to I wanted to pick the best say I have a two or a three hour window to ride but why would you want to ride at 7 in the morning to 9 when it's 38 degrees if you ride from 11 to 2? Or if, if you didn't have, I have other things going on here, you could ride from 2 to 5 and it'd even be warmer. So that's something a lot of people don't think about until, until you're really freezing like I was yesterday. Now here's some really good information you probably know, but this time of year, and I always try to wait. Now we haven't, we had one quick frost, but before we get those days where the whole garage is frozen and everything liquid freezes, what happens, a lot of these products, you just pick one at random, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it does or it doesn't say this on the label. Most of these products have a liquid that freezes, water could be one of them, or freezes at some temperature that we will get over the winter time here. Now, what happens is a lot of times you don't know you, you leave these in a frozen garage and you t and let me just take one out and show you what happens. This, this is one of these products that's $45 a, uh, it's a compound, a polish. You can shake it up all you want and what will happen, if you look at it when it comes out, just look what happens. Let's see if we can get some out and show it up close. It It's not really homogenized. There's little... I'm going to show this. Because this is an important thing. You know, I've got hundreds of dollars worth of waxes and polishes and stuff. And if you don't know about this, and you just leave it in a frozen garage, sometimes you can shake the product up. I imagine I could put this in Karen's blender. And, and I don't think Karen would like that, though. But if you look at these products, when you, they've been left to freeze... They do not homogenize back up the way they should. Now, I wouldn't say, since I have so many of these, some do and some don't, because they're all expensive. And you really don't want to... And I, you have just another one. I'm going to see if some of these, you know, they always say, uh, keep out of reach of children. Yeah, well, you know, don't drink it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of them will say, keep from freezing on the packages. And what that usually means is once they... they come apart you can shake it all you want they're just not as good or effective as when you don't let them freeze so my game, my thing is from this point in the winter on I have my one bucket I have two I did the I did the other one already I have my little polishing tool and by the way another little tip I've been working on my bathroom doing some grouting and boy does this make a nice little I I set it up out here where did I have it I, I had the little grout removal tool Whoa, was that handy there was some spots you just couldn't get in with the, the big handheld tool. Anyway, this was one of the surprises of last summer, how good this is. We used it to, to do a lot of polishing. We're going to use it when we polish the GS engine later. That's one of my projects on the list. But that is another, I think, a very useful tip. is Don't let anything that you don't need to have out in the garage freeze. It doesn't do it a favor. So we got our projects all planned out and it looks like we'll be able to get a, uh, a short ride and it looks like it has warmed up just a little bit but, but we'll take everything we can get this time of year. You never want to miss a riding day. There's just, there's not many left this year. We want to get them all. And don't forget that radar detector. God! 
Well, it's warmed up a little bit and we still have about a two and a half, three hour window to ride. There'll be plenty of leaves on the ground. And there's still some, a few leaves on the trees, but not many. Gotta watch the edge of this driveway. Greasy! Feels good having that radar detector back. Didn't have it yesterday. You can see how dark and cloudy the sky was. It was a chilly day. So the first thing is to get into the back roads. And the back roads were pretty clear today, surprisingly clear. Ah, the sun never really came out today. That was a shame. But again, without that radar detector, it's hard to have a sport bike ride. And it was snow and leaves once we get into the back roads. And the main roads were pretty clear, but those back roads, oh, holy mackerel. And this loop has a little bit of everything. We're going to wind up at the Dormus house. And this house was built in 1760. Can you imagine? Imagine if when they built this old house, they knew this many years later we'd be looking at it. And the sun, again, never really came out today. I was surprised. But again, it was not a lot of traffic, so I guess it was a good compromise. Not many leaves left on the trees. Not many. But again, this time of year, you can't really be fussy. And it won't be long and we'll be starting our winter project session anyway. I just never get sick of riding this loop. This is a great loop. A little bit of everything. And all within an hour of my house.
And look at the leaves. It's just even in the street here. And the only bad part, the wind was really blowing today. And I know the GoPro picks up some of that wind noise indiscriminately. And once we get off the beaten path into these back roads, it's so much fun. If you never rode these back roads, you're in for a real treat. And every time I ride them, I have, I'm always surprised how much fun it is. And here's why we have to ride with a radar detector. So this house was built in 1760. Wow. What a brickwork. Anyway, an interesting, interesting stopover for today's visit. There's always, I like to show why we have a radar detector. There you are, cruising around, minding your own business, not bothering. And you think you know every possible place the bogeys could hide. But the radar detector sees all. You think you're safe? The radar detector makes you safer. Look at where this guy's hiding. Check that out. Would you you can't see that ahead of time. So we go by in slow motion here. And that's why we have our Valentine radar detail. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. And thank you, Mr. Ninja, for making this ride so much fun. What a great ride. This and the other day, without the radar detector, I really didn't enjoy the ride that much. So the only thing that's going to ruin this ride, you can see the wind, look at the wind blowing here, and I'm sure the wind noise is going to kill out all of some of the footage, but never have a bad time with our 650R. Anyway, I want to thank the healthcare workers, guys, thank you, thank you so much. And because of you, we're able to get this ride today and, and share it with our friends on YouTube. So hope you enjoyed sharing the video. This was a very unpredictable, eclectic day, and that's the way I like it. Hope you enjoy sharing the videos and thanks for watching. Now we try to share something almost every day, whether we're working on motorcycles or painting them or, or the, the best thing of all is riding them. 
or changing tires or changing batteries or whatever we're going to be doing. We got a we got a really big schedule of stuff we're going to be doing in the shop this winter. I hope you'll join us for some of the fun, some of the action. Share some pictures of your motorcycles and your projects. And as I always say, <laughs> old men, old bikes, young hearts. And thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I enjoy the feedback. I enjoy the phone calls. I enjoy every part of motorcycling. A passion for motorcycling. Again, thanks so much for watching.